One thing that's very important when working on a new Pro Tools session is to keep everything neat and tidy. Uh, and two of the best ways of doing that is to name each track appropriately and to color code your tracks in the appropriate uh, instrument groups. Uh, so I'll show you what, you, what I mean. Uh, so we've got eight new tracks open here and a master fader. Uh, say the first four tracks are the drum kit. So maybe like kick, snare, and overhead left and right. Um, so the first thing I'd do is go down here to where it says audio one, double click that, and that will let me change the name of that one. So I can change that first one to kick. And one way of uh, naming them all, I could go okay, and then double click down here on audio two and say snare. Uh, the quicker way of doing that is to double click on kick or I'm on snare at the moment, uh, type in snare and then hold command and then write on your keypad and then that will move over. If I hold command and press left, it will go back to the previous one. So command right and then overhead uh, left. Command right, overhead, overhead right. Uh, then say the next track is bass, bass, uh, guitar one, guitar two, and vocals, and enter. You can click OK or you can click enter. So yeah, um, that's pretty important because as you track, um, as you start recording, uh, Pro Tools will name the regions that it starts uh, recording uh, according to this name over here. So if you don't name your tracks before you start tracking, uh, then it will just name all your tracks audio one, take one, audio two, take one, take two, and you'll have a tracks folder full of just audio one, audio two, audio three, and it's pretty easy to get lost when you get up to 12, 24 tracks. Um, and that's pretty important for housekeeping if uh, you lose something or something goes missing um, or you want to go in and find something that uh, you need to find, uh, it's a lot easier when all your tracks are named the appropriate names, then you'll be able to go straight to it and fix up whatever you need to fix up. Uh, so the next thing is color coding, um, something I do all the time. Uh, say we've got the kit here, and then you go down to this little just colored region down here and double click that. And then you can change the color of the kit. Say that's red. And then say bass guitar, double click down here, yellow. Two guitars, double click down here, maybe make them green. And vocals, double click down there. We could make them light blue. And that will make it so much easier um, to get around your session. Um, say you want to work on drums and you've moved them down here. You've maybe got 24 tracks going or something. You've just moved me out of the way to work on the bass um, to find the drums, to bring them back up and start working on them. Uh, you can find them pretty much straight away by looking for the red tracks. So that's pretty handy. Um, and with all these color uh, things, if you double click down here again, uh, you can change the saturation and brightness uh, here. So, so you could go full saturation, full brightness, and that's like pretty bright and a bit harsh on your eyes. You can turn that saturation down and the brightness down. Bit easier to work with. But yeah, I think that's um, all I want to say about that.